life has this funny way of teaching us all lessons. And divorce has got to be one of the most profound lessons we can learn. When you're a young man and you get into a relationship and you decide to give your commitment in marriage, you kind of think you got it all figured out. You think you know what you're doing. You think you've got all the answers. You couldn't be more confident as you enter into this arrangement that you know very little about. Then you mind warp or fast forward 20 miles or 20 years into the future and the divorce comes and you realize that your entire worldview was wrong. That you did not know what you were getting yourself into. In fact, everything that you thought was real was an illusion. It was the construct of some paradigm. And you have been the victim of this universal joke. And now you've got to reconstruct your entire world and figure out how you got here and where do you go from here? So today I want to talk about the one lesson, the one thing the single most important thing that I have learned in my divorce journey. And it not only applies to divorce, it applies across the board to just about every aspect of my life. And it has been so eye-opening. So let's get into it today. So when we're kids, you know, we're always after our attention after the attention of our moms. And of course, mom, she's a woman. So we kind of get socialized into, you know, getting the attention of a woman and trying to provide some level of, um, I don't know, uh, approval, get some kind of level of approval from mom. And I think that sets the tone for the rest of our lives. Because then we go on to school and the vast majority of the teachers that we deal with, well, they happen to be women too. So again, the socialization just gets pounded in. Then we get on to high school and college, and because the stakes are pretty low when you're dating, um, seeking the approval of a woman under those circumstances seems completely normal, and it leads to success, quite honestly. You get the approval of a woman in high school or college, and, well, it could lead for some really enjoyable dates. But then you move on, and the stakes go up, and you don't fully realize it. I mean, you know that marriage is a thing that you're supposed to do. I mean, it's on the algorithm for Life 1.0. So you kind of follow along in that same little journey. Meanwhile, society, since the beginning of time, has prioritized the survival and the care for women and children because if... uh, you know, the neighboring tribe or a pack of hyenas got into the cave and killed everybody, well, we wanted our tribe to survive. And if at least one man survived and any number of women survived, then there would be continuity in our line. And so one man was all you really needed. And if you could save all the women and some of the children, well, you could start over again. So we had this cultural backing, this cultural um, belief system that you know, women's lives and their needs, I'll start off with lives. Women's lives were more important than men's. And I think that's evolved into us interpreting that as their needs. Now women in their hypergamous nature, and I love that word, but really all it means is that women are shoppers. Big surprise, right? Women have always been shoppers. The only difference is now they're, they're shopping for men rather than for stuff. Which is kind of funny because women have always complained about being objectified by men. But I can't think of anything more objectifying than being shopped for. No, I don't want your paw. 
Ugh. Ugh. So then we, uh, we move into the big leagues and we start to decide that we're going to follow the algorithm in Life 1.0 and we are going to um, find ourselves a girl and marry her, right? I mean, we've got it all figured out. You know, we've figured out how to, you know, win mom's approval and then we went to school and we figured out how to learn all the teachers and earn their approval. Um, and all the girls we dated in high school and in college, they were easy to, you know, to satisfy. They, they all approved of us. And so we have a lot of confidence going into this thing, right? I mean, we've had a lot of success by this point. So at least I had a lot of success going to this point. But anyway, so you get to that place where, all right, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do it. We're going to pull the trigger on one of these girls. So you go for the, the very best girl you can possibly qualify for. I mean, you stretch and you find yourself the prettiest or the nicest or whatever it is that you value and you find that girl and you marry her. Now, until recently, I had never really heard the word hypergamy. So I, probably just within the last year, that word came into my vocabulary. So I had no idea that hypergamy was a thing. I mean, I knew that women were irrational and emotional, but I felt I could handle that. I had done a pretty good job of that. I'm a pretty logical, rational thinker, but I've got enough emotional intelligence to, you know, deal with a unruly woman. You know, I, I think I, I'm pretty good at that. The problem is, is they don't become unruly. So they just internalize whatever emotional issue they're having and then it um, manifests itself or it festers underneath the surface for a very very long time and then it manifests itself in this announcement that they're unhappy and that of course leads to the end of your marriage. Now what I've learned since the end of my marriage has been really really eye-opening and the lesson seems so obvious on the surface but it's taken this long for me to really figure it out. And that is the whole benefit, the whole lesson, the whole um, payoff for this whole experience starts with the understanding that men can't be free until they no longer seek the approval of a woman. Once you get to that place where you are literally free of that idea, that concept, that a woman's approval is required for you to be successful, then you're literally free of their clutches because they no longer have power over you. Now granted, you're still going to be attracted to them and that's my problem. I still, you know, I see the girls in their pretty dresses and I can't help but turn my head. But I have to remind myself all the time that that's just going to lead to something that probably is going to be worse than, than what I have now. So I try to resist it. But um, breaking that spell where we have been so socialized over our, our entire lives to seek the approval of women and then to finally break that spell where a woman no longer has that kind of control, or that kind of... Um, Oh, I don't know what the right word is, that, that um, ability to attract us and manipulate us, it's just the single most freeing thing. At least I thought it was. For a long time I thought that was it. That was the most freeing thing. But then as I sat back and thought about it, you know, this YouTube channel, everything in life has a lesson for you. And this YouTube channel has definitely had a lesson in it for me too. Um, so a lot of the guys, you know, I wrote some, uh, I created some videos early on complaining about women. And I think men have been complaining about women since the beginning of time. All right. I, I think that the whole reason why Jesus had all these disciples walking around with them is they all just wanted to get away from their wives. You know, they just, we're going to go hang out with Jesus for a while. You know, we're going to go down to the Sea of Galilee. We're going to have a little, you know, fish and loaves thing. No, don't come. It's just a guy thing. You know, I'm sure that's what it was. But Men have been complaining about women and their behavior since the beginning of time, yet at the same time, um, we have allowed them or we have submitted to some level of control. 
maybe that is genetically programmed into us to a certain degree, maybe it's just socialized, but we've given it up pretty easily. Anyway, so fast forward to now and this YouTube channel, um, after I'd created all these videos complaining about my ex-wife and my marriage and what it feels like to be free and how, you know, st stay healthy, stay single, and I still believe that, don't, don't doubt it for a second, but um, there is a toxic sect of the manosphere that wants to blame women for the whole thing. And quite honestly, women and their behaviors have been like this forever. You're just figuring it out, just like I'm just figuring it out. It's not a, it's not a slight against you. It's not like, yeah, you're an idiot because you didn't know this. No, we're all just, every man figures it out on his own, or you die wishing you knew. This is the way things are. And it's been like this since the beginning of time. Women have always made men crazy. We've, they've always um, annoyed us, gotten on our nerves, um, dri driven us crazy, because we're both attracted to them because of their attractiveness, and we are pissed off by them because of their ability to create problems like no other species on, on the planet. I mean, and of course, men are problem solvers and women are problem causers. So it's this natural fit in this dystopian relationship that leads to the continuation of humanity. And yeah, so I don't know. But the YouTube channel has taught me that these red pill guys that are way out there on the extreme, way in that toxic you know, right side of this thing where they just think women are the worst things ever created by, by God under the sun and that they are evil and there's no redeeming quality and all that. And if I say anything nice about a woman or if I say, you know, still find a date, you can still have some kind of a relationship, there's still all kinds of good stuff you can get from a woman without making yourself vulnerable. I mean, I like the idea of dating and fooling around and having friends with benefits and I enjoy the company of a woman just not all the time, you know? I like having them for a while, you know? I like going to dinner sometimes. I like conversation. I learn stuff from women sometimes. It's amazing. Their insights about life are different than ours. And so sitting down and having a conversation with an attractive woman is an extraordinarily fun experience. Where it becomes unfun is when you submit yourself to seeking their approval. That's when the thing gets all sideways. That's when things go badly. It's when you think that you need to do something to win their approval. Now, in a normal conversation, if you're sitting around with a bunch of guys talking, you know, you're not going to get into a confrontation with somebody because you don't agree with them. You just say, hey, I, I you know, agree to disagree on that. You know, that's not something that I, I buy into. And you can do the same thing with women. You just don't, just don't take it personally, you know. Um, don't fear that you're not going to get their approval. Don't expect that they are going to... Um, agree with you and you'll be fine. Jax is front and center in the, in the picture here. Jax is now in charge of the, of the YouTube channel. Huh, pal? Is that what you're doing? You're, you're taking over the camera for me? Anyway, so I no longer seek the approval of people on social media. So I really don't give a damn what you, know, you extremists think. I hope that you will enlighten yourselves to the understanding that you can't alienate 50% of the planet just because you're afraid that you're going to submit to them in some way that's going to leave you vulnerable as a man and they're going to take advantage of it. Because to me, that sounds like a wuss. That sounds like a guy that hasn't got control of himself. You know, you have the awareness of all this stuff now. You have no excuse. If you can go in with this awareness and have a healthy relationship with a woman, and you set the frame, you set the parameters, then why wouldn't you? Why would you run from that, really? I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, to me, like I said in my last video, it's a cop-out. It's like, yeah, you're just, you're just too afraid. You're just too afraid to submit yourself or to put yourself in that position where you might be um, seeking her approval and then you might lose control of your ability to manage your life. And, yeah, you don't have to do that. You can remain in control. You can have a healthy relationship with a woman. Um, just don't seek her approval. And in fact, I would recommend that you don't seek the approval of anyone. I would recommend that you 
get pretty competent in your own worldview. Don't lock it in to the point where you're unwilling to listen to other people, but at the same time, you know, feel confident in where you are and who you are and what life is to you and what your goals are and you know, what you want from this experience because you're not going to find it anywhere else. If you, don't, if you don't come up with it, the last thing you want to do is find it on a YouTube channel or find it on Facebook or, God forbid, on Pornhub. You know what I mean? You don't want to find it there. So the single most important thing that I learned from my marriage and my divorce and the five years that have passed and it's sort of the simplest lesson. And sometimes the simplest lessons are the toughest ones to learn because they seem so obvious. We take them for granted. We think we already know it. But until you actually feel the ramifications of it, you don't really know how it applies. And that is, don't seek the approval of anyone. Don't seek anyone's approval. At the end of the day, you're the only one who needs to approve. The trick is, is you've got to feel confident enough in your interpretation and your understanding of the world that you live in that you can make good decisions, that you can seek your own approval. Because when you're seeking your own approval and you're the only one that you answer to and you start making really good decisions, uh, life becomes like uh, limitless. It becomes limitless. That's probably the best way to put it. Because now the whole thing is open to you. You're not looking to anyone else for permission. You're not looking to anyone else for approval. You're not looking to anyone else for help. You're just doing it. You're just doing it. All right, you guys, thanks for watching the video. Um, please like and subscribe. Make sure that you uh, leave me some comments. I love you know, reading your comments, answering your questions. And I will see you in the next video. Stay healthy, and if you can, stay single. Dude, you're getting me all wet. Yeah, you're getting me all wet. I don't want you climbing on me. I don't want you jumping on me. Nope. I know you want to. I don't want any hugs. Nope. 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 I can tell you want to do it. I'm, I'm not going for it. Nope. Just settle. Just settle. Just relax. Yeah, just relax. It's all good. Nope. I don't want you on me. No, you got wet paws. Just sit, Jax. Just sit down. Just sit. All right. How nice is this? Nice, huh?